Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel and welcome to Controlling Water Flow with a Solenoid and Arduino IoT Cloud and this is part two in a two-part series. If you like what you see here after you're done this video, please hit the thumbs up and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can check out commercial for pay design services, electronic design services at forcetronics.com. All right, let's get started. Okay, here's a slide I showed in part one, so I'll just go over it quickly, but here's our whole setup. We have our ESP32 board, which is our brains behind it. It can connect to the Ar Arduino IoT cloud, which we can set up a dashboard to control the ESP32. And with the right solenoid drive circuit, which we set up in part one, we can control the sol solenoid, essentially turning water or gas or oil line on or off. So in part two, we're of course gonna focus on setting up the IoT cloud, the code that we're gonna load on our ESP32 and creating the dashboard. This slide gives a quick bulleted list on the things we need to set up high level on the IoT cloud. The first thing is setting up our device, setting up our ESP32, our network, Wi-Fi information and things like that. For doing that, instead of me trying to cover it in here and maybe having a part three, I'm just gonna recommend you to a great tutorial that I'll have a link for in the description of this video. And I recommend doing at least steps one, two, and three. You can actually do the whole tutorial. It's pretty simple and it'll sort of give you an overview of all the steps. I'm gonna start with creating our thing. So I'm gonna assume that you've looked at tutorial first and you have a login, you have your network information in there and you have your ESP32 or equivalent Wi-Fi Arduino board set up in IoT Cloud. All right, let's talk about how we can set up our things, then we'll look at our, our code, and then we'll look at setting up the dashboard and seeing everything in action. Okay, here I am in the uh, Arduino IoT Cloud. You're looking at it through a web browser. I'm logged in already and I'm at the Devices tab. And you can see I already have my ESP32 underscore test tied to my account. We can see its status is online. The board manager profile I'm using is the ESP32 dev module. You can use, of course, whatever matches the ESP32 board you're using. But anyway, you should have this part at least already done. So let's look at setting up our things. So the things are variables you set up that is used by your dashboard in the cloud and also by your sketch to tie common uh, variables together. So that's what we're going to set up first and you can set up different sections of things for different dashboards or different code sets. I named mine solenoid control. So if you wanna create one, you just hit this create button. And the first thing you need to do is name it, then add some variables. And we'll look at the variables that I added. You wanna associate your device. This is your device that you already set up, your ESP 32. Remember, mine was ESP32 test. I could associate with this. I'm not because I already have my things set up. But that's how you do it. And for the variables, we're going to use two different types of variables. From the basic types, we're going to use a Boolean variable. And then from the time types, we're going to use a scheduler. So that's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to just get out of this because I already have mine set up. You can see it it did save the untitled, I'm gonna delete that. But if you go through that process that I just showed you to create it and then add your variables, we wanna add two variables. The Boolean, which I'll, I'll show you how I set it up. I named mine solenoid underscore state, Boolean variable. It auto generates a name, which you can use. I didn't like it how it auto generated the same name as the thing name, so I just said solenoid no underscore state. You want it to be a read and write variable, and then you know variable update policy on change and then save it water scheduler and uh, here's the types read and write on change water and we'll show you how to set up the scheduler too but that's our two variables we're going to use for this tutorial and once again the boolean is going to allow us to create a switch in our dashboard so we can manually turn it on and off the solenoid that is from anywhere right anywhere with an internet connection and then the water scheduler allows us to send set up timed intervals for when the solenoid turns on and then turns off again and that's with no interference from us it'll just do it automatically 
Then of course you have to associate your device with your things. And my thing is solenoid underscore control. I only have one device right now, so the ESP32 test. And now at this point, we can go to the sketch. So a lot of the sketch is auto-generated. I'm actually gonna open this sketch in the full editor. Okay, here we are in the full editor. Here's our sketch. I'm not gonna show you my secret, but this is gonna contain some of the information, you know, such as your Wi-Fi network and secret key and things like that. This things properties.h was automatically generated. And you can see this has some of the information that we created in our things portion. So on water schedule change, this is a function that's called when the scheduler fires. On solenoid state change, this is a function that will be called when the solenoid state changes. We have uh, you know, some variables. The variables we declared for our things are declared in this .h file. This init properties is something we're gonna call in our sketch. But this is, once again, all auto generated by Arduino once you do your things setup. Now here's the actual sketch. Some of this is auto generated, some of this is what I wrote. And I'll paste a copy of this uh, probably on my blog if you wanna see it in detail. But this includes the things properties.h, which we just looked at, uh, that was auto generated. I defined my solenoid pin that I'm using to control the solenoid from my ESP32. It's pin 21 on the ESP32. I set up that pin for output and I initially set it to low. This initiate properties was auto generated by things properties.h and you know they automatically put it in the sketch. Here's another auto generated function which is the Arduino cloud which is gonna handle connecting to the cloud and maintaining that connection. Here's some debug functions. I haven't really studied exactly what these do, but these allow you to capture debug messages for errors. And then here we are in the main loop and Arduino cloud.update is auto-generated and that's just probably checking our connection with the cloud, maintaining it. The simple if else statement is something I did add. So when I looked up the water schedule variable and looked at some of the functions that are available for it, one of it is is active. So when I call the variable dot is active, this will return true if the water scheduler is set to be on or false if it's not. And then I have an or statement and then I have solenoid state, which is our Boolean character. So if either of these are on, the digital pin writes the solenoid control pin to high or else, you know, it puts it to low to turn the water off. So that's our simple code setup for controlling the solenoid. I'll also show these function. These were auto-generated. In fact, I used this function at first for testing. But this function is like an interrupt function that's called whenever there's a state change in the solenoid variable. And we'll, we'll show you how to do that in the dashboard. So this function is sort of an, like an interrupt function. And then a similar interrupt type function is on water scheduler change, which means the water scheduler turned on because of the timing or turned off, this function would be called. And you know, if I had a more complex sketch, I probably would be using these functions, but I just put the control simply in the loop for now. Okay, let's go back and look at our dashboard. Okay, so I have a dashboard, I named it Solenoid Control. And once again, if you don't have a dashboard yet, you can create one here and it's very intuitive of what to name it and things like that and what to tie it to and the widgets to add, which I'll show you in my dashboard. So this switch, which I named Waterflow, is a widget. It's an on-off switch. And the idea is the widget you can then tie to your thing variables. And so your sketch you know, changes your, communicates with your thing variables, so does your dashboard. So by changing the switch, I'm changing that Boolean variable, which is tied to this widget, and which my code will detect that there was a change and then control the solenoid to do what it's supposed to. Same thing with the scheduler. So right now we're in the dashboard view and you can also go into look at it from a smart device point of view. We're gonna look at mine from a computer point of view. But if we click here, we can go to edit and we can add widgets. So that first one I have is a switch. So you would just click on that to add it. And then when we're in this edit view, we can edit our widgets. So I named mine Waterflow. So this is where you can name it. And then you have to link it to a variable so you can see in things solenoid control group, I link it to solenoid state, which is our Boolean character. So that's how simple it is just to link it to our code. Okay, I'm done here. 
And then we have the scheduler, which I named scheduler. I have it linked the same way except to our water scheduler variable. So real easy to set up the dashboard. It's really just clicking and some easy steps to link it to the thing variable you want it to be to either control or read from. Okay, and our scheduler is real easy to edit. We can just click on it. And once again, we're still in the edit mode. There's a couple things we can do. First, we can you know set the start date. We can set the start time. So this is the time it's gonna turn on. Mine says America slash Denver because I'm on mountain time. We could select the duration. For example purposes, I just set it for seconds. How often do we want it to repeat? I have it repeating every day. And then end of reoccurrence. How often do we want this to just keep cycling? I just have it set for never. Then we go back to the dashboard view. And now let's look at our dashboard in action. Okay, so this is gonna be a similar setup that we saw in part one, except we're gonna control it from our dashboard instead of locally by a switch. So here we are at my sink. I have a hose that's connected to the water line outside that's turned on. Right now, the solenoid is off, so no water is flowing from the nozzle. We already went over the hardware setup in part one, so I'm not gonna go over that again. And here's our cloud setup. So this is just what I just showed you. And all I'm gonna do is turn off to on. You should have heard that click. And now we can see on our power supply that we now have current flowing, signifying that the solenoid is open and water can flow through the valve. So I'll show that by holding that down, spraying out some water. Then I'll go back and I'll turn it off. We can see no current flowing. And then when I squeeze the nozzle, there's still a little water left in the hose but we can see it's cut off by the solenoid. Now I'm gonna to go to the scheduler. So first thing I'm gonna do is kind of show the time on my computer. And then I'm gonna to go to the scheduler to set up a time that's shortly in the future. There we go, we have our time typed in, 2.45 and 30 seconds. So I'm doing it down to the, the second type uh, resolution. Duration is 10 seconds. And I'll fast forward here to get us up to the time we want to be at. We're getting closer to uh, the time for it to turn on. Water is not on and now it should be on. So we'll look at the power supply. We see our current is flowing and we can turn it on. So I'll just let it run until the 10 seconds is up. Water is still on. Now it's off. So our 10 seconds is up and no more water is flowing when I pull the trigger. So that's how easy it is to set up um, you know, a cloud dashboard to control water flow or to really control any type of uh, actuator or to read sensor data and use that to control an actuator. So if you know already know how to use the Arduino IDE or how to write Arduino code, setting up this IoT dashboard is real easy. Of course, if you set up enough things that you're always running on the IoT dashboard, you'll have to get a Arduino 4 Pay account. Okay, that's all for part two. And if you have any questions or comments on things you think I missed or maybe that weren't clear, please let me know. And thank you for watching.